Wall Street has long faced criticism over its track record on diversity, especially in its top ranks. Only four of the 200 largest public U.S. financial services companies have female CEOs. Although we have made incredible progress, if I think in, in my career from when I started to now um, where I am, there's been amazing progress, but it's just not fast enough. Earlier this month, Jane Fraser was named as Citigroup's new CEO, making her the first female leader of a major U.S. bank. About 40% of Citi's employees are female, but most of them aren't at or even near the top. I think there's a much greater awareness that it's not just the right thing to do to have diversity in senior ranks throughout an organization, but it leads to better outcomes. It's not just women who are underrepresented. At Goldman Sachs, less than 3% of executives, senior officials, and managers are African-American. At Citi, black executives and senior managers account for only 2% of the total. Racial tensions across the country this year have turned up the pressure on firms to make changes. BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, has promised 30% more black employees at the firm by 2024. Slowly but surely, again, these sort of institutional kind of framework biases that exist are kind of slowly but surely getting broken down a little bit. Wells Fargo CEO Charles Scharf came under fire this week over comments that the bank has had trouble meeting its diversity goals because there isn't enough minority talent, something for which he subsequently apologized. There's a lot of terrific talent out there. Uh, we've been at this for a while. Uh, la uh, last year, 49% of the folks we hired were women, black, or Latinx. 